Little Things is a new serial killer crime drama that is now streaming on HBO Max, and it also is in available theaters. This is one of the first new releases of the year for Warner Brothers. If you guys don't recall, Warner Brothers basically took all of their movies that were scheduled to come out in 2021, and they decided to release them simultaneously in theaters and on HBO Max. So for whatever reason you can't go to the theater to watch this movie, try to watch it on HBO Max. This film stars Denzel Washington, Remy Malek, and Jared Leto. I mean, you're talking about three Oscar award-winning actors right there. That talent alone is what made me kind of interested to see this movie. So this movie takes place in the 90s and it follows Denzel Washington's character who is a deputy sheriff who used to be a homicide detective. Kind of gets unwillingly drawn back into a situation, another case that a hotshot detective played by Remy Malek is working on. The murders in the case, which involve a bunch of teenage girls getting stabbed and brutally killed all over Los Angeles. The murders in this case are very similar to a case that Denzel Washington's character worked uh, a few years ago, back when he was the homicide detective in LA. So they kind of team up and then they stumble down the rabbit hole and the whole while they're trying to find out who is it that keeps killing these girls and how do they catch them. Along the way, Jared Leto is here for reasons that I can't really reveal. I've said repeatedly on this channel that I'm not the biggest horror movie fan per se. I'm, I'm kind of casual with that. There are a few that I like, a few that I don't like. There is one genre that I've always been kind of interested in and that is serial killer dramas or like serial killer psychological type of movies. I love mystery thrillers. I love movies where you have to try to piece together the clues. You have to pay attention to the details in the story and you're trying to catch a killer basically. I've read books like that. I like movies like that. Then you look at the talent and you look at the director who actually does a very good job directing this movie and you're kind of like there's no reason why this movie shouldn't at the very least be good. I don't need to tell you about Denzel Washington, right? I mean he's Denzel fucking Washington. You know about Denzel. Denzel is damn near the goat, isn't he? I mean, has the guy ever made a bad movie? Does he have a single bad or even average performance on his docket? I don't know if any other actor has aged as gracefully as Denzel Washington, but essentially you could film him doing whatever. You could film him just sitting on a park bench, feeding pigeons, talking shit to himself, and that would be a very entertaining performance. I appreciate the work that Remy Malek is doing in this movie. He's another actor that I have followed throughout the years, and I think he's really talented too. For what they're asking him to do, Remy Malek is actually really good. There is an earnestness that he brings to this role, kind of like a wide-eyed uh, optimism and, you know, kind of a, a no-nonsense approach that I really appreciated. Jared Leto is kind of like the wild card in this movie. No pun intended as referencing his previous work as the Joker. He brings an unpredictability to the film. There's definitely scenes that he's in with Denzel and with Remy that are just kind of sparkling with a whole bunch of psychological tension. And those are some of the most interesting scenes in the entire movie. Granted, there are some moments that it feels like Jared Leto is not acting in the same movie as everybody else. Like it kind of feels like he's a creepy, you know, drunk or half drunk version of Jack Sparrow. Although, is there a sober version of Jack Sparrow? Isn't Jack Sparrow always drunk? That's a question for the scholars. All I'm saying is that Jared Leto brings that type of vibe to this movie, and I think it pays off in most of his scenes. I will say that I like the setup here, and I like the mystery and the intrigue that was teased in the beginning of the film around Denzel Washington's character. You definitely get the sense that there's some history, that there's some baggage there at this department he used to work at. A lot of that kept me interested throughout the first act of the movie. There are two aspects of this film that it's trying to execute, and I feel like it drops the ball in both aspects, especially in the second and third acts of the movie. One of these aspects is the whodunit part, right? It's, it's the mystery surrounding the killer and why is this happening and why are they targeting these girls and what is this killer doing? How do they catch him? The other aspect is the psychological toll that a case like this would take on maybe the people involved because maybe there are some demons and some stuff in their past that maybe is affecting them for this case. Unfortunately, the movie just doesn't do enough of anything with either of those two aspects and by the end of the the film, the whole thing feels wasted. As far as the who done it and the mystery part of it, the story just fails to engage and different points in the movie, you just don't really see where they're going with everything. They don't build the story for that in a very effective way. And it definitely feels like you're just wasting your time watching great actors go through the motions. And what could save that is great character work or a great twist. And I will not spoil them. There are a couple of twists towards the end of this film but they're twists that land with a dud instead of a bang. They try to tie into the story that connects to the character
characters in a way, and the problem is the character work is not well done in this movie. Denzel Washington, yes, there's a lot of intrigue surrounding his character, but it feels like it's from his perspective the entire movie, while everybody else knows about his secret. So in the end, you're just wading through an entire movie, like waiting to find out what this big secret is, and by the end, you can kind of already tell what it is, and you're not impressed anymore, and then the reveal happens, you're like, oh, okay. Can't believe I sat through two hours just to get to that. Guys like Remy Malik and Jared Leto are giving interesting, intriguing performances, but character-wise, there's just, there's nothing there for them to do. So when the character work falls flat, then the twists that you have incorporated into their characters and mixed with the story also fall flat. It's a movie that had a lot of potential, especially on paper, but as it stands, there's a world of difference between potential and reality. And the reality is that this movie ended up being kind of disappointing for me. The Little Things is equal parts good and equal parts bad. I'm gonna leave this one in the Fortress of Solitude. It's an average movie. All right guys, those are my thoughts on The Little Things. Tell me what is your favorite Denzel movie. If you don't have one of those, tell me what your favorite Jared Leto movie is or tell me what your favorite Remy Malik movie is. Put that in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe to The Super Fan Show. And as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel and stay tuned to hear more from The Man of Steel. Peace.